are the people who I want to appeal to. Make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan. Ability to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, you jump right back on. And welcome back. We're moving into a familiar and favorite for many people. Brock it down, Jenny. Good it's morning. Good well, morning. Good morning, please. Now, Jenny, let's let's jump right into our question okay. for today because sure. we want to maximize the time that we have. Yes. And so I'm going to start off with this question, um, which has become, with technology, a big part of what is happening right now. Uh, it reads, so, is it right for my partner to demand to have the password to my phone and tablet? Please, talk to her. She will be listening. <laughs> that sounds like somebody really frustrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we've talked about this previously in the show. Mm -hmm. And the whole issue of privacy... An individual space. An individual space and boundaries. But can it know? also uh, indicate trust or past well, behavior? It's a big trust issue. But if, you know, William, even if a person has violated trust, if you've decided you can't trust them anymore, then you need to move on. But How critical is trust? Because some people feel as if though you can mitigate the situation. I get your password. I check this. I, you know, I do all these other things. Police. I'm policing yeah. you. Can you police a relationship? You can't. If you, if you have to police a relationship, can you imagine how much energy that takes? How can you possibly have time to do the things like nurturing and loving and all that? If you decide, if, if there has been infidelity, right? Mm -hmm. And it has something to do, because... I, I know I've, talk, I've been talking to some people and they say they see their partner sitting through the all night long. The phone is buzzing. It's not even ringing, it's buzzing and, and they're texting. texting and texting, right? And they are suspicious. You need to have that conversation. What, what's happening? But right? should you be, okay, technology has been a, a thing that people use. I mean, you can't, in, ver in many cases, even to go out and have dinner with a friend, the conversation is significantly less because people spend more time communicating with people who Down aren't here. there. Right, right. So is it worrisome in terms of relationships if somebody spends one in particular, uh, spends quite a number of time, uh, uh, time, a significant portion of time responding to texts, etc.? That is, I'm telling you, this is a pet, pet peeve okay. because we went out, and I'm, I'm talking to one of my friends, my good friends. We were out having dinner. And he sat there, we're at dinner. There's a group of us, and he's on the phone the entire time. We're in front of you, we are here. We are live buddies right here with you. We've become a, a, a nation, not just us, it's the world. This invasive thing and the little tablets are so invasive. Each individual has a responsibility to monitor their own selves and, and put, put a limit on it. If you're out with friends, you put that phone down. I'm talking to all you guys. And, and women, girls. And women. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, seriously, we have become so, so engrossed in this, this thing. Or we're so engrossed that we're wanting to take pictures of everything mm -hmm. that's happening. And we're totally, totally forgetting the human, the socialization things that are important to keep hum the human family together. We're not doing those things anymore. And a lot of times, I, I don't think it's cheating. I just think that they're busy just passing and Facebook. And I was watching my, my cousin the other evening. And she's sitting there just going through Facebook and sending things here and sending things there. I'm sitting here visiting you. There's something really wrong, and I think we have to call it to people's attention, that you're totally forgetting the socialization, the importance of, social, of, of interacting. Yeah. Meet me on Facebook is what they'll tell you. Now, and I want to pull back to the question, mm -hmm. too, the whole password issue. I know now that you have things like tracking apps. Mm -hmm. I can agree, or we can agree, that, you know, 
I put an app on your phone or we download the same app and I know where you are mm -hmm. just by going and looking mm -hmm. and you can do the same. Mm -hmm. Passwords, same kind of uh, need to satisfy it, that I am aware of what you're doing and, and when and where you are. But if I need to do that, if I mistrust you that much, why am I in a relationship with you? Is, aren't relationships supposed to be based on trust and love? But some people may argue too mm -hmm. that giving me your password shows that you have nothing to hide. Well, I can give you my password and have another phone. I mean, think about it. Or delete everything, right? Yeah. We because just, just keep delete. I keep deleting. But or why? Have, have another Facebook. I, I, honestly, if you are going to watch me that closely, it's just like with children. The more you tell me not to do something, the more I want to do it. So, so let me ask. Uh -huh. Why is this such uh, a big part of discussions lately? The whole... Uh, make me feel comfortable by giving me your password. It's so crazy, William. I'm telling you. You cannot police a relationship. People have to sit down, and, and that's I keep on saying. You have to know the person you're with. Because if I can't trust you, then I don't need to be with you. I shouldn't be with you. And if you have to police my every move, you're bound to have me get where I want to show you that I, I can't be trusted then. That's crazy. It's crazy. How if it's mutually agreed? If you want to do that, you agree that you're going to change, exchange passwords, right? Mm -hmm. What? No, I'm going to constantly be in your phone checking you every night? What's the point? The password is supposed to like, make sure that I don't talk to anybody else. I, I'm trying to understand that because I don't understand that. The minute you ask me or demand, and, and according to this, demand that I give you my password, you, you're, you're pretty much wanting to control something about me. And the minute you want to enter into my private domain, there's a problem. There's a huge problem. I'm sorry. You don't seem to you, you no, seem no, no, to disagree. No, no, no. Um, I am of the thought that, you know, your, your phone, there is space that you need in any relationship. Yes, man. And people should respect that. I will yes. never give anybody my password. I will never give anybody my password. Because I think it's my space. And nobody should ask me. That is, it's called but some boundaries. People, but some people look at it, and I'm just trying to be devil's advocate mm -hmm. in, in this regard. Because, you know, for some people past tran transgressions mm -hmm. might, you know, prompt somebody to ask for that and then I can randomly go in your phone and check to make sure that you're doing and, 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 and whatever. And then you may just find something that you did not want to find. And then what do you do? Uh-huh. What do you do? What do you do? If you're going to use it, the, the power uh -huh. to necessarily evaluate your relationship is it um, then a good thing to have it you see william the, from, I'm, I'm honestly i'm to, to see you I'm, 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 and i'm asking you this question because it's almost like terrorism right mm -hmm. it's gone online so has cheating mm -hmm. and for some people they feel as if though if you have it's the certainty of you know uh, it's like uh, enacting law and enforcement mm -hmm. And so some people, for them, having that password is that in the back of your mind, I'm not going to jump off into these kinds of behaviors because there's always this possibility that you can go into my phone and find out <coughs> if I am. So, but if I give you my password and I, want, I meet somebody and I want to do something, I will get another phone. I'll get another phone. It, it, relationships must be built on trust. And so you have to give people the space? Yes. And you have to make sure that both parties are comfortable and that they are decided. Now, my whole take if on it I, is... William, <laughs> if I love you and you love me 
and I'm doing. We're both doing all the things that we need to do for each other. The thing, my, the way I'm treating you, you're not going to want to look out there for somebody else. Will you? Think about it. Because people don't run away from love. People don't run away from relationships where it's wholesome and nurturing. They don't. But some people argue too that they need the policing. Really? Yes. Because they can't trust themselves. Then give her your password. You voluntarily give her your password since you can't trust yourself. And say, monitor me. <laughs> <laughs> No. So there's never a good, under no circumstance would you um, agree that this is a good thing to go into. We constantly talk about boundaries. Let me explain boundaries. Unfortunately, a lot of times in Belize, we don't learn about boundaries because we are so enmeshed. Everybody all up in everybody else's affairs, and so we always want to be in everybody else's affairs. And this is why we have so many dysfunctional relationships. And if we want to have healthy, nurturing relationships, we have to work on changing those things. We have to learn to trust. We have to learn to embrace people's right to privacy. If I am going to marry you, it means that I know you. I know the kinds of things that you are, are capable of. We work through those things. I'm not going to marry you or get with you until I absolutely know that you are capable of doing those things. But that's again, too, is a problem. We just run out and we jump in with people, and we don't really know them or what they're capable of. And then now we want to control the situation. That's control, William. Let's call it what it is. It's control. Okay, Janet, we're going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next question is as follows. Jenny, my boyfriend was the sweetest, nicest person I have ever known. And very smart, straight A student. Last year of his bachelor's degree, hmm, suddenly he dropped out of school. He eats other people's leftovers, eats from the trash, yells at people on the street, has become very aggressive, and worst of all, he seems to hate me. I have had to call the police because he destroys things around my home. It's not alcohol because he doesn't drink. He does smoke a little weed, but weed makes him mellow i'm confused and very scared hmm. that could be several things going on there several things let's let's talk first about the weed mm -hmm. we have a number of young persons now who I, i'm sure you've seen them on the street young people who walk and they're talking almost zombified right the weed, uh, what kids are using weed now in what they call blunts. Mm -hmm. And in those blunts, you don't know what's in there. Crystal meth, ecstasy, um, crack. William, a person, depending upon the constitution of their brain, could take one hit a smoke crack and go absolutely insane because the brain can't handle it. It fries the brain. All right? And for each individual, the response is completely Dif different. Different, exactly. So kids need to know when they go and they take a hit off of somebody's blunt, they don't know what they're getting. A lot of times when they're sitting around, they're passing past the duchy, past the kuchi, whatever. They, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what's inside a blunt. They have to be very, very, very careful. And a lot of stuff that's coming into the country, we don't know. There's so many new things out there, the bat salts, the flak, and all the other things. And psychedelic <sighs> drugs are becoming synthetic in vogue. Synthetic drugs, yeah, yes. And synthetic yes. Um, are becoming in vogue Popular again. again, yes. So you go out, and whether it's ecstasy yeah, or something else, even cocaine has become recreational yes. again in, in some circles. Yes. You don't know what you're getting. Now, let me tell you. Drug-induced schizophrenia, a lot of times, these people will never again, they, they won't come back because that part of the brain is fried. 
Schizophrenia is a, is a disorder, it's a mental disorder that affects how people feel, how they think, how they behave. All right? You could have a perfectly normal person in college who happens to go out one night and gets with friends and smokes a, a, a joint and end up with schizophrenia. All right? Drug-induced schizophrenia. No. Now, it's possible that this is what happened with him. But, go ahead. Now, I wanted to ask because of the, um, does it point to some kind of mental illness, especially if someone starts eating out of trash? Um, that could be drug-induced schizophrenia. Okay. The, the thing I want you to, to, let me just say this about schizophrenia. It is, it could be genetic. It could be from, you know, from your family or anybody, anybody can become schizophrenic just because of too much stress. You're in college, you're working, too much stress and you trip off. And, and that's one of the points that I wanted to, to ask you about too. You have these different types of type A, personality, etc. Mm -hmm. And if he was a perfectionist, mm -hmm. could he have just snapped? for no particular reason because of the pressure well the pressure the pressure the of pressure. being perfect and the straight a and mm -hmm. the overachiever and mm -hmm. so many other things it's highly possible see the thing is you don't know because schizophrenia um, can start affecting somebody in their late teens 1920 right that's when it starts it's a chronic illness and it lasts until 44 sometimes beyond all right Anybody can have it, can, can contract it based on the, the level of stress they're going through. And he may have had a genetic predisposition for this. Right? The thing is, is that somebody who has schizophrenia will behave differently. You, sometimes you hear them, the, the, the speech is very different. It's like, almost like a made-up language. Um, they will have hallucinations auditory hallucinations, they, they hear things. They will hear voices. A lot of times they will tell you that you know, they, they see people with them or see people around them. Or sometimes they might look at you on the television and you're, you're talking to a guest and they're, they're thinking, William is telling me he loves me, right? So there are different types of schizophrenia. Um, but some of these people, yeah, no, it happens. They, they think that you are in love with them and they will stalk you. Right, um, the, or the the echolalia, the the, the, blah, 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 the kind of talking. We also have the catatonic schizophrenia. So there's all kinds of things, and and they deteriorate. They will start becoming very um, unkempt and dirty. They'll eat from the trash. Sometimes they become very violent because they think people are watching them. You know, yeah, William's looking at me through the television, and he's spying on me, and he's looking at me through the walls, and. So they, they think, feel, and behave differently. This person, I, I am as, um, the girlfriend, is asking specifically, she goes, I am confused and very scared. What should she do? Number one, I would call Port Loyola because they have an outreach um, nurse there. Um, I don't have that number, but call Port Loyola Clinic and ask for Nurse Castillo or Nurse Eligio. Um, they have an outreach and they will come to the home. You need to give them the, the address and whatnot. And they come to the home and if they have to have him taken in and they will um, make sure that he starts getting medication. And if he has family members, they'll teach them how to administer the meds and work with him. But he clearly needs to be seen by psychiatry. Clearly, clearly. But anybody else who has family members, instead of um, locking them away or, or locking them out of the house, get them help. Call the psych nurses at Port Loyola because they will come out. Okay. This young man sounds to me like if he didn't get some bad um, stuff that, um, you know, that, that triggered this, it may have been something that was starting and it just exacerbated it, right? Made it worse. Um, but clearly, he needs to be seen by psychiatry and quickly. But how, how can you intervene? Because I'll, honest, this reminds me of a situation 
that I'm a witness to very recently. Mm -hmm. Again, a very good student, and he just seemed to have cracked. Mm -hmm. You know, had a job and everything, quit it, quit school, everything, mm -hmm. and you see him walking around. He now has an American accent, and he, he's FBI oh. operative in the country and, okay. and all of that. But how can you intervene, even you can't. From, the, from the girlfriend side or even from the just platonic friend side? They can't hear you. You need to call psychiatry. And will they go on, I don't know, any other way, I guess it's based on our BDF conversation, a reconnaissance, so, so to speak, to actually collect the person and help them through that process? The thing is, with schizophrenia, the quicker, the earlier you get it, the better their chances of recovery. So if you have someone who's just now beginning to show these signs and symptoms, it's best to call psychiatry and have them bring them in and get them the help they need. The longer you let it wait, it becomes more chronic and they become more ill and it'll stay with them longer. Remember, this is a chronic illness that can stay forever, a long, 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 long time before they recover. Under medication, they function, he'll go back to school and he will be fine as long as he's on his meds. And do you think um, our society is such that he'd be given a second chance because if people see you functioning at that level for a while mm -hmm. and it breaks their image of you how hard is it for that person to actually come back you know reclaim their job reclaim school reclaim friends reclaim so much of their life good question stigma and discrimination against people with schizophrenia is really bad in this country really really bad is it because people don't understand they don't and there's understand. a genuine fear that this person right. may snap again right. and may hurt there's a genuine me? fear there is a genuine fear okay and i'm saying once people are on their once they're on their meds they function fine we have a lot of folks in jobs you would never know that they had the illness because they're taking their medication and they are fine and so the message i want to get across is that if you have someone call the people at Port Loyola and have the nurses come out and get them in. There's an acute unit in Belmopan where they will, will take them there for two weeks and make sure that they get the meds into them, train the family in how to work with them. And they go back and they go to school, they work. We have several of, of these folks you would never know, William. If you came to, sometimes you come to our banquet you would not know who is ill and who isn't, who's a consumer, who isn't. Our folks function with medication, but we, again, as a society, we have to start giving people the opportunity to come back into life and come back into our society and not hold it against them forever. This young man needs help, and he needs help now. And the one you're talking about, instead of we're looking and saying, well, Call, call them and give them a name and an address, and they know what to do. Now, um, I know we're almost out of time, but can we jump into another question, or you, you want to go a little bit more? I, I, I just said, just this, this is such a, because you know, I'm, I'm the president of the Mental Health Association, mm -hmm. and we have so many young people right now who are showing these signs. And we know it has something to do with the drugs that are out there and what they're, uh, they're having access to. And so for me, this is a very important thing that uh, if people have friends out there who are showing these signs, and I've, I've said a lot of the signs, please call psychiatry. If they're really acting out and they're being violent, call the police. The police will take them to psychiatry at um, Port Leola. They will take them there. But the point is, get the help early. Because the longer you wait, the more chronic it becomes, and, and the, the longer it'll stay with the person. And I, I can't say that any more clearly and more, more sincerely. These folks can be helped. Should she cut him off? No. They need support. They need love. I wouldn't say go and, and be in the same house with him right now until he's on his meds. You know, you need to get him in to, to get help first. But no, you don't want to cut them off. That, that's, they need our support. They need the family support. They need the girlfriend support. Even, even because from her question, she 
indicates some aggressive behavior that she's afraid of? Because he doesn't see her as he's not seeing her. You don't know what he's seeing. Sometimes he might just be seeing a big cockroach. You don't know what he's seeing. This is why you need psychiatry to intervene. She is, she is seeing a different person, and everything that she's describing sounds to me like it's the beginning of schizophrenia. And so it needs to be seen by the people at psychiatry and get him the help he needs. And then if there's family support pushing this, he will get it and get it quickly. And I'm just saying it for everybody else out there because we're seeing young people. So very important, get them help early. All right, well, Jenny. Okay. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us today. And of course, you'll be back. And if you have questions for Jenny, you can send it to <laughs> us here, or you can also send it via email to Jenny. Or do it, you know, people write it on pieces of paper, they leave it at the resource center. Yeah. So you have uh, options as to how you get it to her. These questions are for Jenny. We don't track, we don't uh, do anything else. We just want it to be a larger, uh, a trigger for a larger conversation within the society. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, it'll be to look at uh, quinoa and uh, the health benefits and how do you prepare it. We'll be right back after these messages with more. Open your eyes. These are the people who I want to appeal to make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, jump right back on. Mm -hmm. 